Hey there, Alex Kidman here, and today I'm taking a look at a kitchen gadget, the Instant Pot Pro Plus. It's a pressure cooker, fundamentally speaking, although it's a multifunction pressure cooker with a number of smart design tweaks and a few smart features, some of which work better than others. Now, I'm aware that Instant Pot is one of those brands that has a certain kind of culty following to it. Some people swear by it, swear it's changed their lives, that kind of thing. It's a pressure cooker. They've been around for a while. You're not going to get that kind of review out of me here. What I'm really interested in is, is it worth its money? Because that's ultimately what any product has to do. And in this case, the short answer is, yeah, I think it is, although probably not for the reasons a lot of other people seem to extol the Instant Pot brand. Let's get into it by first of all having a look at the design. So look, the Instant Pot Pro Plus is shaped much like any other pressure cooker you've ever seen. It's an external chassis with a base heating element into which you place the Instant Pot Pro Plus's actual pot. And so far, so ordinary. The pot itself, as supplied, is stainless steel, which I like. It makes it considerably easier to clean than the non-stick kind you get in some other pots. It's also equipped with side handles with silicon grips on them, and this I really like. It's one of those so simple, it's stupid tweaks, but it really, really changes how I use it. For any other slow cooker or pressure cooker, and I've had a few over the years, I've always had to reach for the oven gloves to get the pot out if it's still hot, and I've just cooked something in it. Here, I can just grab the side handles and carefully move it out once meal's done. I mean, the food's still hot, you've still got to be careful, but it's a lovely little design touch, and there are several of these. Moving on to the lid, for example, it uses the typical arrangement, metal lid in a silicon seal that you'll find in any pressure cooker, although nicely you get two silicon seals in the box. Why is that nice? Well, simply put, because silicon seals can pick up a lot of scent, a lot of odour from your cooking over time. And of course you should wash them, you should keep them clean, but having a spare means you can swap them out while one's being washed, the other one can be used, you can keep using the pot in the meantime. The big thing I like with the lid, however, is the side tabs that make it easy to perpendicularly place the lid once you've actually cooked something. This allows the water to drain out from the lid, and there's even a little channel for it to drain into, but it also just gives you somewhere to put the lid. So many times I'm kind of left scrambling for some space on my bench top to put a steaming hot lid. This one has it built in. Really nice, clever design tweak there. At the front of the Instant Pot Pro Plus, you'll find its primary display, which is touch sensitive for selecting its various cooking modes, pressure, temperature, venting, and neutral boost mode. The latter here releases vents of steam within the pot to theoretically improve flavor, primarily for more liquid-based meals such as soup. The panel itself is fine so far for touch sensitivity with a dial at the base for adjusting the variables, though I do wonder how well it's gonna hold up over several years of usage where touch displays often get a little bit quirky, they get moisture under them, or just take wear and tear and stop working quite so well. And in some ways there, I feel like buttons are still better here for long-term durability, but that's very much a theoretical position. I've not tested the Pot Pro Plus for long enough to firmly say that it will or won't last the distance. I just have concerns there. Unpacking the Instant Pot Pro Plus is a simple enough affair, and outside of running a quick pressure test on the device, there's very little stopping you from getting right into cooking with it. However, there is another step that you can take, though you don't have to. There's a big part of why this is the plus model of this particular pot. Instant Pots have a lot of pressure cooker models, but this particular one is also Wi-Fi capable. And I know what you're thinking. Why does a pressure cooker want or need Wi-Fi? Am I going to surf the web on it while cooking? Well, no, but for setup purposes, you connect it to Wi-Fi via the Instant Brands Connect app for iOS or Android. This does involve signing up for an account with your email address, which is your timely reminder to use a password app and unique passwords everywhere, but I digress. The app itself follows the usual path of getting you to select your network and apply your password, and then the waiting game begins. Instant Pot obviously knows this is a slow process, given it advises that it may take several minutes to complete, and they're not kidding. For my setup, it took nearly 10 minutes before the app was actually happy it was connected to Wi-Fi at all. I was honestly waiting for some kind of crash message because I was pretty sure it had crashed, but eventually it came good, way, way slower than any other smart gadget though. Thankfully, you should really only ever have to do this once. In terms of performance, the Instant Pot Pro Plus has 10 different onboard cooking functions. 
pressure cooker, slow cooker, rice cooker, seamer, saute, yogurt maker, warmer, canning pot, sous vide, and NutriBoost. And in the interest of full transparency, I've not tested every single one of them because, for example, I've not really felt the pressing need to make any yogurt or do any canning to speak of. What I have done is use the Instant Pot Pro Plus to prepare a variety of meals and sides for my family over the past couple of weeks, testing out its efficiency and the quality of the food it prepares, both using it as a standalone pressure cooker and via its app functionality. Mostly here, the news is good, with both pressure cooker and slow cooker functions, easily 95% of the cooking I do with appliances like these, performing very well indeed, producing pleasant meals. Naturally, there's a limitation here around ingredients and to a certain amount your particular cooking skill or mine, but compared to my existing, somewhat cheaper pressure cooker, I found the Instant Pot Pro Plus ran quite well. It's also somewhat faster than my existing and slightly cheaper pressure cooker, though this will of course vary depending on what you're choosing to make. Its default for rice, for example, is 12 minutes cooking once pressure is reached, compared to 14 minutes on my existing pot. And look, that two minute time frame might not seem like much, but the Instant Pot Pro Plus also got to pressure much faster than the cheaper model, which meant that my side of rice was actually ready to eat about 10 minutes faster all up. And look, when you've got a household full of hungry teenagers, 10 minutes is a long time for you waiting. Or at least they tell me it is. Steam release for the pressure cooker functions can be managed with settings for natural release, pulse, or quick release. Quick release, I should say, is quite loud. I found it started my cats rather easily compared to my existing pressure cooker. So be ready for that. Comparatively, pulse release is quite a bit quieter, but Look, and maybe this is just me, I can't help but feel like the Instant Pot Pro Plus is farting out steam when I use it that way. Natural is slower and quieter, but typically I've tended towards using the quick release while apologising to my cats because usually I actually want to eat the food sooner. I mean, why else would you buy a pressure cooker if you didn't want to eat the food faster? Look, then there's the app and Wi-Fi side of matters, and here my opinion is a little more mixed. The Instant Brands Connect app comes with a wide array of recipes, searchable via ingredient, which I do rather like. Often I find myself pondering dinner options based on what's in the fridge and freezer, and typically I'd head to the internet to do that kind of thing. But the problem here, and I'm sure most of you are going to be aware of this, is that about 99% of all recipe sites have a huge problem. The problem there, they can't get to the point. There's always 9,000 paragraphs about how the recipe was their grandma's favourite and how it makes them think of childhood and summer days and all this other nonsense. And I just want the recipe and the ingredients and to work out whether or not I want to follow your method, thanks. But they just never get to it. The app does that and it does it fast. And for this particular model, it'll also send the relevant settings to the pot itself. You don't have to select them. It'll do all that magically for you if it's connected to Wi-Fi. That's not, you know, a killer feature. It's not like you can't program it yourself, but it's nice to have for sure. Where I'm less sold on the Wi-Fi side of things is this idea of remote access. So yeah, look, theoretically, I could throw a bunch of ingredients into the Instant Pot Pro Plus before I head off for work and then fire it up, you know, when I'm half an hour away by train or car or whatever and have food ready for me. I, I get the idea, but I don't think I'd be doing that with a lot of stuff that I cook. I would worry about bacterial growth on ingredients that I'm just leaving out on a bench top all day long, especially in Australian summer conditions. And I'd also be concerned about whether or not I might want to add things or how things are going to react with each other because you'd have to put everything into the pot before you left. And sometimes those are things you don't necessarily want marinating each other for 8 to 12 hours before they're cooked. Now, I'm not so fast on the kind of hacking and security side of it. I don't think the hackers are going to turn this thing into a bomb. Although I do also wonder about the utility of that if the servers change or if Instant Pot goes out of business, you know, three, four, five, ten years from now. Are you going to be left with another gadget that doesn't really work that well all that well? Now, thankfully, of course, you can totally ignore this. You don't have to set up Wi-Fi at all. You are not missing out on functionality if you do so. 
basically I'm a little bit split. The, the app works well enough. I can't fault it there. I just think the use case is a little bit niche because I can't really think of a point where I'm going to go, hmm, I'm halfway across the planet. I think I'll vent the pressure in my pressure cooking for the lols. So in conclusion, I get that there's a certain cult of usage around the Instant Pot brand, especially in overseas markets, and I can kind of see why. Because whenever you spend more on a premium brand item, your brand is likely to try to protect your ego by convincing you that it's a better product. Because none of us really want to think that we've made foolish purchasing decisions. But is the Instant Pot Pro Plus actually that good? Well, look, while it's not a revolution in cooking technology, pressure cooking is not new, the answer is still mostly yes, it's a good product. I do think it lives up to its price promise in terms of the overall results you can get from it, though my favour does lie as much in those smaller design steps, the silicon handles, the ease of holding the lid perpendicular to the base, those kinds of things, much more so than the real utility of Wi-Fi connectivity. Anyway, that's my take on the Instant Pot Pro Plus. I know I'm not the first person to review this, far from it. Have you got one? What do you think of it? Was there something that I missed in this review? Let me know in the comments below, and as always, thanks for watching, and don't forget to hit like and subscribe.